Well, welcome to God's country. <laughs> we're, uh, we're glad to have you here. We're glad you finally made it. Sorry for the weather problem. The weather in Lexington is Bob's responsibility, not ours. It's good here. And uh, after the last week, we come last week, we'd be fighting in terms of snow and 30 degree weather. So we're glad that uh, the week has passed. Uh, I want to thank Bob and his team first. You know, we have, we've been fortunate that we have um, hosted a number of communities to come and, and see Omaha. You're the largest by far. Um, but we also kind of know how the trips are going to go by virtue of the call and contact that we have. Uh, Lindy and Katie have been remarkable. Uh, they do really, really good work. Uh, and you're blessed to have a team that knows how to do these things and get the most out of them. So, so uh, congratulations on having a great team to put all this together. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Alan for all the work that he's done here in Omaha, too. I know he's a Lexingtonite. Is, is that what you call yourself? That's a good Lexingtonian, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Like Omaha, and you have to learn how to say that before you leave. Um, but uh, Alan's also made a huge impact on Omaha. Um, as the owner of our uh, AAA baseball team and the, the proud beneficiary of a brand new baseball stadium in uh, southwest Omaha, um, he's really made a big difference here, and we appreciate all the time and energy you spent here. Thank you. Um, I've been asked to sort of set the stage for you, and I'm going to try and give you a bit of a framework that I'd like you to keep in the back of your mind as you're hearing about and seeing Omaha for many of you for the very first time. Um, I have, I was very surprised when I um, started out here, and continually I've been surprised by things that are accomplished here. It is a, a city that gets things done. It's a business community that is remarkably engaged, some would say even over-engaged, uh, and a, a community that is generous to a fault and is always worrying about the quality of life here. Let me kind of give you a little more detail behind those kind of things. First off, um, in 2002, our friends in Gallup were asked to go out and do an assessment of what the marketplace, corporate side trend consultants, um, large economic development clients, etc., thought about Omaha. And they came back and said, well, the good news is they don't think you stink. <laughs> the bad news is they don't think anything about you. They know you exist. And for the most part, there was this general ambivalence about Omaha as a marketplace. Now, it's much better than starting from a hole. But honestly, we really had kind of a, a clean canvas that we could start with to try and build perception of what Omaha is like in the marketplace. In the last nine years, we've spent millions of dollars trying to build image out there in the broader marketplace. And this last year, we had another consultant go out and try and assess what the market thinks of us now. And it's only that we've moved from ambivalent to a generally warm feeling about Omaha that it's a positive place to be, to live, and to work. Now, there's not a real ex explicit reason why people feel that way. But everything they've read, everything they've seen, everything they've experienced has told them that Omaha is, is a good place. And we're now taking the next step of trying to become that place that people identify as one of America's great cities. And so we'll be spending more time on more grand explicit stuff over the next five or six years. But suffice it to say that we kind of started with a situation where I know many of you really haven't thought about Omaha before Bob and his team picked this up as a potential place to be. You were probably surprised that Omaha was on the list of communities that you were going to consider. I hope you will leave in the next few days after having experienced this next few days wondering why you haven't visited us before. Uh, we are a truly remarkable place. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the corporate engagement. You're, you're blessed with sponsors and 190 plus companies that are letting people leave their place of work in order to do a better thing for their community. Uh, we have a, a business community much like that. We have a, uh, a leadership group here that is broad and very generous. Um, if you look at uh, our corporate 500 headquarters here, our corporate 500 headquarters here, there are five of them. Um, Berkshire Hathaway, of course, has had their um, annual shareholders meeting here this past weekend. 35,000 of their closest friends were here for four days. Um, they spend somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 60 million dollars in three days. And um, we love them. The Berkshire's are great. <laughs> Um, Union Pacific Railroad is also headquartered here. They've been headquartered here since they went in some of the bluffs in Council Bluffs and pointed across the river and said that's where the Transcontinental Railroad is going to begin. And that was the beginning of Union Pacific Railroad. Um, Mutual Omaha is here, but many of you may know them either because we have life insurance with them, uh, but many, many of you may remember them as children of the Wild Kingdom. If you're like my family, I expected Marlon Perkins to show up as soon as I showed up here, shaking people's hands on, on the sidewalk. Uh, they are very large and, and very uh, community-minded here as a leader. Uh, Peter Kiewitz, maybe a company that you're not as familiar with, it's a very large construction company. 
They do large dams, bridges, <coughs> highway construction, and primarily in North America. Um, they started here when Peter Kiewit moved here to start a brick making operation 100 plus years ago, and they have grown into one of the country's largest construction companies. They're fully owned at Fortune 500 anyway. Uh, Conagra Foods is also headquartered here. Uh, they are essentially a, a collector of brands in the food industry. Uh, they're very large again. They also started here. They weren't called Conagra back then. They've gone through several different brands, but they got a very large employer again that started here in Omaha, Nebraska. And I think I have missed one. No, I haven't. I guess I've gotten all all five. Um, the other thing that's unique about them is that they have all started their businesses here in Stadium. They've been doing their leadership teams. Union Pacific is probably the, the most extreme example. Five of their top seven people now are Omaha uh, residents and natives, but they went to the University of Nebraska in Omaha and got both their bachelor's degrees and master's degrees. It's a Fortune 500 company that has homegrown people running their company. We have four Fortune 1000 companies that are also headquartered here. There are about 19 companies that have more than a billion dollars in sales in our metropolitan area, all that started up here in Omaha, Nebraska. So essentially my job is to make sure once a decade one of those companies is started. And we keep adding these billion dollar companies and we're all pretty happy campers when that happens. Now one thing to say to Eric here is another thing to talk about engagement. Um, I have never been in a community where the CEOs uh, of these companies take a personal responsibility in seeing that the community grows and that they are helping to lead that growth and change in the community. Um, I have been fortunate to have all but one of those Fortune 500 CEOs as chairman of my board since I've been here over the last 10 years. Um, they have also been the heads of the United Way campaign, the Salvation Army, Free of Life campaign, the Boy Scouts of America, you name it, there's a major organization in town. All of the big CEOs of all the big companies all take a, tour, take a turn at managing as, as chairman of those volunteer boards. And they don't assign somebody else to do it once they have raised their hand and said they will do it. They actually engage, 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 and try to make a positive difference in those organizations. I remember the year that Dan Geary, who's the head of uh, Beach of Omaha, was our chairman. He was also the chairman of the United Way campaign that year and the chairman of the Boy Scouts. It happened that year that the United Way had a record campaign and the Boy Scouts had a tragedy or a tornado hit one of our camps and some young men were killed. And uh, Dan spent all of his waking moments making sure that that was taken care of. And so if you think about what he needed to do to run his business, I think he did that after hours because most of the time he was engaged with our help coming with in our organization and solving the challenges of the United Way and the Boy Scouts. These folks also <coughs> made financial commitments, not just in writing checks for big projects, but also in leading the campaigns to fund them. So yesterday we were blessed to have a new $307 million um, cancer research center, Ray Brown, at our med center here at the University of Nebraska Med Center in town. It's the largest single capital investment the University of Nebraska has ever made. $307 million project, $260 million of it is private money. A local CEO uh, took on the responsibility of putting together a team of other CEOs to raise those funds from both foundations and from individual companies. And all of those major corporations in town are major givers to that campaign. That's just one example. If you look at TD Ameritrade Park, $143 million ballpark, $46 million in private money. Um, the Holland Performing Arts Center, $100 million project, $88 million of private money. The Century Link Center, a $275 million arena and convention center, $275 million, $75 million of that private money. And then engagement with the private money essentially says, now we also want to have a say in how these things are run. So they assert an engagement where businesses are at the table. Businesses are making decisions about how these organizations manage themselves and run themselves. So I'm, I'm trying to make the point that this is a, a, a business in a corporate town. We have a lot of small and medium sized businesses that are dynamic and growing. But the business community does drive an awful lot of the agendas here. Public private partnerships are the norm rather than the exception. Most of those are driven by the private sector. And we bring that public sector in for the things that public sector can do best with infrastructure and zoning and some of the incentives and work that needs to be done. Uh, but in Omaha, at least, I think you'll hear this over and over and over again. Uh, the private sector really does an awful lot to keep this community uh, in a great place that it is. And the last thing that I'll touch on you is that you're going around soon with all this great stuff. And you're seeing the great facilities and amenities that are here. Um, remember, those were mostly developed because we were trying to create this sense of place that was so unique that people will want to live here, will want to stay here, will want to raise their families here, will want to come here for their careers, and want to make investments here. If you look at our zoo, which is generic rank number one or two in the country, um, that zoo was put up for our residents. 
By the way, it's a zoo and it's an aquarium, it's a rainforest, it's a IMAX theater. We call it the zoo, there's eight major events all happening in one place. But, um, but it wasn't built for tourists. It was built so that the residents of Omaha had something to do year round. Half of that zoo is something that people visit during the cold weather months. It's all indoors. It was designed that way. So these amenities that you see in town were probably the notable exception of the convention center. We're all designed to make this a better place for people to live. And if we can make this a better place to live, then companies can find it easier to recruit the people here, keep the people here, and continue to grow in the face. So a sense of place is very, very important. Um, we talked a little bit about rankings earlier. There's about 45 different rankings that we out that we were ranked last year in some positive way. We don't count the negative ones, of course. Um, and, you know, and, and we're very proud of those every year. We keep track of them because, like you, a lot of people don't know a lot about us. So we're trying to let other people make the case that we're a great place. I hope that you will draw that conclusion yourselves after your, your visit here over the next three days. Um, I'll be with you, I think, on Friday uh, to talk a bit more about our partnership with Lincoln and all the regional economic development work that we do. But in the meantime, please enjoy your stay. Um, spend as much money as you care to. Uh, our retail folks would appreciate it. And then if you see something that's really special and kind of future interest, make a note of it, and I'll be happy to answer questions about it when I see you on Friday. Thanks again for being here. Thank you.